So about a month ago, I did a video on my channel about me making my 2020 Ableton template. And this has been working out really well for me. I've been using it in all my brand new productions and that's kind of given me the kickstart that I need on every new project. But recently I've been reading on different socials about how using templates can make Ableton quite sluggish. Now, if you are putting all your big plugins into your template, then it will take a while for Ableton to load up. It's just gonna happen. That's just the way it works. But I wondered if there was a better way of doing it, a different way of making your template or changing your workflow so that it loads up a bit faster and you can get going quite quickly. And you know what? I think I found it. Now, I'm always looking at ways to improve my workflow, and this little workflow hack was actually inspired by one of my quick tips in January. Now, I was thinking about templates and whether we can actually split the stuff in our templates up by the stuff that we use all the time within our track, so every single track that we use those elements, and then also those elements that we use sometimes. So maybe we could actually take those elements that we sometimes use and put them into a toolbox instead. So rather than loading them up every single time with our template, they'll be in this kind of toolbox that we can reach into whenever we want them. Now, that's what we're gonna cover in this video. We're gonna make this kind of Swiss army knife of an Ableton project where it's gonna have all of our secret weapons and our tricks that we can just dip into and pick out whenever we need them. Right, so let's go ahead and create this project. Now, this is not gonna be like a normal track project. This is basically just gonna be a toolbox of all of the different kind of tricks, the little kind of instruments, the effects presets, the snare rolls, all those kind of little things that you use within your tracks every now and again. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get rid of all the tracks that are currently in here. I almost want this kind of blank template, this blank kind of project, so I can then start putting stuff in. And the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to one of my previous projects. So I'm gonna look at one of my previous tracks within here. Now, I've mentioned before that if you go to the folders of your tracks that you've produced and then you actually go to the project that's within those folders, you can actually click on the arrow next to it to see all of the different layers. So you can see all the different layers within here that make up this track. Now, obviously, if we are making a new track and we want to bring in something from one of our old tracks, then we can just bring up one of these projects and just drag and drop it into our track. But the only problem is, is that this then comes with all the different MIDI clips and all the automation and all that kind of stuff that we then have to clear out. So by creating this kind of little toolbox kind of project, it gets it all ready for it. It's almost all prepared for us. So say, for example, with this track here, I have this kind of, uh, I have this kind of snare build almost, this kind of build up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this snare track into here, which is going to import it in full into this project. And if I zoom out, you can see this is the whole of my track. This is just the snare going throughout the whole of this track. Now I've used this snare individually in different places here. So we've got some kind of snare pattern going on here. But what I'm most interested in is the actual snare build. This is what I want for my kind of toolbox. I wanna to be able to just reach in and grab this kind of snare build. So I've got this snare build here. So at the moment, it's really just the snare and the MIDI notes, the actual effects. So the filtering and everything else like that is probably done on the group within here. But we're going to replicate that in a second. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete all these different clips that I don't need. All I need is this one single clip here. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to put that right to the start. With this kind of toolbox project, we're kind of aiming to have elements that are almost just when we go through the loop phase of creating a track, we want this kind of toolbox to just have these kind of loops ready for us to use. So we can see that we now have the snare here. And what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to put a filter on it, for example. So let's put an auto filter on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to automate the frequency of the auto filter. And what I'm basically going to do is just create a sweep on the auto filter going from a kind of low pass kind of snare all the way up to an open kind of snare. And there we go, we now have our snare build. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rename this to snare build. And now I can delete that audio track in here that I'm not using. 
So that's now our first element within our toolbox. I can now jump into this project at any point and just pull that into a brand new track. Now let's pull in another element from this original track. I'm actually going to pull in one of the bass instruments within here. I really love this bass patch. So let's pull it into this track. Now again, if I zoom out, we can see that we have these MIDI clips within here and we don't really want the MIDI clips. We want this to be ready for us to use within a brand new track. So I'm actually going to delete these MIDI clips and then we'll go back to the start of the track again. So we just got that eight bar loop. So you can now see that we have this bass track ready to go. We just need to put a MIDI clip in there and we could start using it. And that means we have the instrument all set up as we had before with the EQ all right, the reverb all done and everything else that we normally have on this chain. Now, of course, we could group all of this together and actually save it as a group, as a preset within Ableton. But it's just as easy just to have it as a track here within this Ableton project. And then we can just pull it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this so we've got a better name for this bass. I'm going to call this old old school bass, for example. So we now have two elements within this toolbox that we can then pull into any track whenever we want to. Now, to keep this even more organized, what we could do is we could take these different elements, we could actually group them up. So I could actually call this the drums group, for example. And maybe call this one the bass group. Now we've got these elements grouped, it feels more like a toolbox. And what we can do is bring more elements into this project that we can then use. So say, for example, if we have more different tricks and kind of techniques that we use for our drums, then we could bring them into the drums group. If we have other bass patches, we could bring them into the bass patch group. And then we could also add other groups within here for effects or anything else like that. Now we've only got two elements in here so far, but I'm just showing you this as a demo. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to save this project. Now I recommend saving this where all your other Ableton products are so you know where it is. And you can call this whatever you want to. So say for example, I'm going to call this Toolbox. I'm doing it as capitals because you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just going to save that as a project. Now, this is where the magic happens. This is where we go back over to our browser. And what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to add that project as a folder in our browser. So I'm going to go to add folder and I'm going to add my toolbox folder in here. So we can now see the toolbox project is now within our browser. And what I can do is I can drag and drop it to the top of the list here, just below the current project. I can't actually drag it any higher than this, but I'm going to put it just under here because we're going to want to get to this quite often. So that's why I'm putting it right at the top. And what I can do is I can actually go into this project and pull out any of the elements that we put within there. As you can see, the groups that we've just created are within there. So we've got the drums group and the bass group, and I can jump into the drums and I can find my snare build within here. So if I start a brand new project, what I can do is just bring in that snare build into the brand new project and it's ready to use. And say, for example, I wanted that bass patch. I can just pull that straight in there as well and it's ready to go. So hopefully you can see how quick and easy this is to do, how quick and easy it is to build up one of these projects. And we've only put two elements in here so far, but I've actually got my own little toolbox project that I've been building up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add that as a folder now. So this is pretty much this is what I made earlier. This is kind of a project that I've been building for the last few weeks, which really contains all of my little tricks, my little tips, everything. So all the kind of tutorials that I've been doing on my channel, all of the different elements are within here. So this contains a whole load of goodies. We have risers and fallers. There's different white noise risers and white noise fallers. Got a laser faller in here as well. All the DJ tricks that I do, so the baby scratch video that I did a little while ago, the spin backs within here. I've also got vocals, so I've got my stretched vocal effect. I've also got the loop out effect and another variation on that. And then I've also got a drums one in here. So I've got all the different kind of drum elements that I can use within my tracks. So say, for example, I wanted a kick. I can just drag and drop this onto a track. And there we go. I've got the kick all set up within here. We can see that we've got the simpler with a kick loaded in. Now, the whole point of this project is that I'm not going to use this kick, but this has created a track for me that I can then load in a kick and it's all ready to go. So I've got my MIDI notes within here all ready to go. Same if I wanted a clap, for example, this would load in a clap instrument. So a simpler with a clap on it and the MIDI notes ready to go. Just one of those things that make it really, really quick. I've also got snare builds in here, for example. So if I go into this snare build, I can drag this in. And we can preview this. And I've also got a filtered version of that as well.
So again, this just gives me a head start on that snare build. I've got the MIDI clip in there, which of course I can go ahead and edit if I want to. I can replace the sample within here. I could then tweak these different uh, effects that I've got on here, but it just gives me that kind of head start. Those, These are the kind of tricks that I do regularly on my tracks, but not every single track, which is why it goes perfectly in this kind of toolbox of different ideas, different tricks. Now I've also got in here the risers. So for example, I could, if I wanted a white noise riser, I could just drag and drop one in from here. And this is how this sounds. So as you can hear, it's really, really simple. It's just got the operator in there, all set up with white noise, bit of EQ8 and the auto filter, which is already automated. So I can actually have a look at the automation on here and I can see that the automation goes like that. But say, for example, I wanted to tweak it, I could then take it the other way. I could do it as a downer, for example. Again, it just gives me that head start when I want a white noise of some sort. Now, say for example, I've got a laser faller here. I can just drag and drop that into my project and we can preview that. Now this is pretty much the same as the white noise faller, but what I could do within here is I could actually change the waveform, for example. Again, it's just all about giving you those quick starting points that you can then go for. So you're not recreating these things every single time. And having this little toolbox just means you can just jump into it whenever you want to. Now, say for example, I wanted a DJ spin back within here. I can just jump into this toolbox, pull out the spin back, and it's now within my track. So this is all set up with a sample within it. But say for example, I wanted to change that sample for something else. I could just drag and drop any kind of beat loop into it and then use the spin back on that. So the whole point of this project is that it's got a whole load of stuff within here that I can just reach into whenever I want to. Those kind of things that I use occasionally on different tracks, I can just reach into here and just pull those out and start using them really, really quickly. So this is how the Secrets Tool project is set up. We can see that we've got all the different groups down here. So I've got risers and fallers, DJ tricks, vocals and drums. Then I've got the elements within there. So all the different layers, all the different tracks, and then also the MIDI notes that I want to set up for them. So let's have a look at the Baby Scratch, for example. This is just like the video that I last did on my channel of how to make a Baby Scratch within Ableton, but this is already all set up for me, ready to go. So I've got the sampler within here with the drum loop set up ready to scratch and then I've also got some MIDI clips in here with different patterns for that scratch. Now when it comes to loading this into a track I'll actually be replacing the sample with whatever sample I'm using for that track and then these MIDI notes I might use them I might not they're just kind of quick start to get me going so I might just want a very simple scratch or I might want some kind of pattern but these just these MIDI clips just give me kind of a head start on that. Now, depending on how many tracks you have within this project, obviously it might take a while to load, especially if you've got a whole load of bass patches or synth patches or some complex kind of chains going on within there. But don't worry, you don't have to edit this project very often. You're only editing this project whenever you're adding new tricks within here. Now, when it comes to accessing this project from the browser, it will take a moment just to load those tracks to see what tracks are within that project, but nowhere near as much time as it does to actually load the project itself. So as you can see, it's really simple to put a toolbox like this together. Now, of course, you can jump into old tracks and pull out that bass patch or that snare build or whatever and put it into your new project. But of course, it's finding that old project and then finding the track within that project. If you've got a toolbox like this sitting in your browser at all times, then you can just drag and drop what you want straight into your brand new track and start using it. All those kind of elements, all those different tracks are ready, prepared, ready to go. And that's the whole point of having this 
this toolbox ready to go when you want it to. And of course you can keep adding to this whenever you come up with a new trick or a new thing that you're doing all the time, then put that within your toolbox and it's ready to go whenever you want it to. Have it all prepared so that it's just so easy just to drop in your new track, replace the sample or whatever you need to do to get going with that new effect. So yeah, it becomes really, really handy. Now this secrets toolbox that I've been putting together over the last two or three weeks, this contains all of the different tips and tricks that I've been sharing on my YouTube channel. So it's got all those kind of DJ tricks, the vocal tricks, all those different kind of uh, quick tips that I've been doing on my channel. They're all within this project. And if you want to get hold of this project, I'm actually going to be giving it away on my Patreon page. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I've got a brand new Patreon page where you can help support me and the content that I put out on this channel. You'll also see on there a tier where you can download all of my presets my effects and my templates and joining that today is this brand new toolbox if you want to get your hands on this template then definitely back me on patreon you'll be able to download that from today but i definitely recommend giving this a go yourself coming up with your own toolbox and adding in all the bits that you usually use within your projects because you can get to it so quickly and i definitely recommend doing it so yeah definitely give it a go and this, if this video has been useful to you then definitely subscribe to my channel i've got a whole load more content like this on my channel so definitely check that all out hit the subscribe link, hit that bell icon so you're notified the moment I upload a brand new video and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.